And the final section of physics, one on one, we'll be discussing directional derivatives. And oh, I'm not here yet. Let me come back. And we're finally back for section 10, the last part and section of physics 101, where we're going to be learning how to take directional derivatives, essentially looking at the rate of change along any direction, along any curve or function of any dimension. For example, our famous ukulele, where we will finally be able to take directional derivatives, not just along this direction or this direction, but perhaps in between or in complicated paths. In this final section, that's section 10 for directional derivatives, what we'll essentially be doing is taking surfaces or functions of whatever dimensions you want, for example, the ukulele, and learn how to take tangent planes. For example, let's say that we want to take a tangent plane at this point of the ukulele. These are the kind of things we'll be taking. If it's on this side, this will be the tangent plane, tangent plane to this very specific point is this one. The good news is you do not need to use a ukulele and the lecture notes to take tangent planes to surfaces. We can actually do it properly by defining what a tangent plane is and understanding the role of partial derivatives in taking tangent planes to curves. So let's try to do it. One thing to realize is that when we start physics one-on-one -on -one and we were looking at any random curve and yx and typically y would obviously be a function of x. We've seen how taking a derivative at a specific point is really about taking, finding the tangent line, the line that touches that point only then, and that gives us the rate of change. In section 10 for directional derivatives, what we'll be looking at is an extension of this to higher dimensions. I already explained to you how we're going to try to find tangent planes to curves. If you missed it, this is what I mean. Instead of looking at a tangent line that touches the curve in a point, we'll be looking at a tangent plane that touches a surface at a point. How do we do that? Let's start by defining a few points in a general curve. Now you can also find this curve in the lecture notes just in case my artistic impression of it is not as good but hopefully you'll get the basics. Now consider this function, which again you can find in the lecture notes. And let's say that we want to get a tangent plane to this point over here. In these kind of functions, we've already seen that z is a function of x, y, and this would be the surface itself. Let's say that this point has coordinates x0, y0. If that is the case, it means that the point itself, which we could call z0, is obtained when you plug in x0, y0. And we can also label it here. This is the point we want to get a tangent line. Obviously, you could just take your lecture notes, incredibly useful to get tangent planes, literally, and just try to do it. In this case, this is a flat surface, it wouldn't really help. So let's do it properly. Now what we're going to do is to define two traces of the surface. Oh, it's still here, but I think he's unaware. By the way, future David, past David. I think we should get rid of him, right? Oh, it's still here. Oh, at least he's unaware of me. I think we really need to get rid of past David and at least for this week, you're going to have to stand future David, who's going to tell you all about directional derivatives. I know past David already started, but he was, he was off to no good. So I hope you're ready for the very final part of Physics 111, Section 10, Directional Derivatives, after the introduction from past David, which we're now going to get rid of. So how do I do that? That's it. So I think we're ready to continue. We're definitely ready to continue. Now, if you remember what past David was telling you, we were trying to find an equation, actually, that you can use to obtain a tangent plane to a specific surface. For example, the surface of this ukulele, 
And in this case, if we wanted to obtain a tangent plane to a specific point, we could actually get the lecture nodes, for example, and make it touch. Tangent plane only touches the surface at a specific point. In this case, let's stick to this example that you also have in your lecture notes. What we're going to do is look at traces of this surface. When we fix, in this case, y to y0, and what we can do is look at something that goes along the surface like this, and then goes to the other side. And also, we can have a look at when x equals x0. This means fixing x. And in that case, we can have a look at a trace that does something like this. In your lecture notes, this corresponds to trace C1. And if we draw it a little bit better so you can actually see it, you can call this C1. And when you fix y equals y0, we can call this C2. And this is our line C2. At this point is when you might get confused because I was putting the definitions to be completely opposite to those in lecture notes. So let's get rid of that. And to get things exactly as in the lecture notes, we're going to call this C2 and this is actually C1. So following exactly what you have in the lecture notes, C2 is obtained when x is fixed at x0 and C1 is obtained when y is fixed at y0. And under these definitions, just like you have in your lecture notes, the tangent lines over C2, we're gonna call it L2, and for C1, we're gonna call it L1. These are tangent lines to traces C2 and C1 at the point Z0 equals F of X0, Y0. An important concept here is to realize that because these are tangent lines and because of the way that we define them, in this case, in L2, we're looking at values when x equals x0, and therefore the gradient will be given by the partial derivative when we fix x. And in other words, the rate of change is fy, this is the slope of the tangent line. And in this case, the slope has to be fx or the partial derivative of f in respect to x because we're fixing y and specifically we're fixing y to y0. These are important to understand what is going to follow. So with these definitions, what we can draw, and in the lecture notes you have a way better artistic impression of this, is that because L1 is a tangent line of C1 when y equals zero. It should look something like this. So it's touching C1 at this specific point and L2 is a tangent line to C2 and it should be doing something like this. And this should be L2, this is L1. These are the tangent lines at, of these traces at that specific point. And our goal is now to use these tangent lines, both of them, to define a plane, which I will not even attempt to do here. It would go very wrongly, but you can imagine there will be along this direction. Again, a plane that only touches the surface at this specific point. How do we do this? Well, first of all, we need a little bit of physics 101 magic from the future. So you see that in the future, physics 101 magic functions exactly in the same way. And what we need to understand is, first of all, this point here can be described by coordinates x0, y0, z0, where the first ones are just themselves. And here, coordinate z0, you can write it as f of x0, y0. The other ingredient we need is to write down an equation for a plane. And in general, an equation for a plane can be written as a x minus x zero plus b y minus y zero plus c z minus z zero. 
equals zero. This is a general equation for a plane. Before we go there, I think it is important to understand and get some intuition. What if we're actually looking at an equation where this component is zero? If that is the case, we would end up with a x minus x zero plus b y minus y zero. This is obviously a b equals zero. And you may recognize this. Even if this is in a weird format, this is actually an equation for a line. And the reason why you go for a line to a plane is by adding another dimension. So you can think that a plane is a very natural extension of a line, but in higher dimensions. How can you recognize that this is actually an equation of a line? You can transform it, actually. You can take, for example, this to the other side. So you could write b y minus y zero equals minus a x min minus x zero. What you can also do is you can divide. You can take b and dividing it on this side. You can also call minus a over b m, for example. And the other thing you can do is, for example, take x zero to be equal to zero so that you can finally write this in a more standard form, such as y equals m x plus y zero, which is something you would definitely recognize as the equation of a straight line, but the general equation actually can be written in this form. And this is mostly so that you understand that the equation of a plane, if you haven't seen it, is just a very natural extension from the equation of a line, which even though you're used to looking at it like this, it can be generally expressed this way, but we can come back now. Now coming back to planes, we can also do something very similar. We can keep this term to the side. Let's write C Z minus Z zero and take the other ones to the other side. So we write minus A X minus X zero minus B Y minus Y zero. Up to here is relatively straightforward. The other thing that we can do as well is we can divide by C. And because of that, we can get rid of this term, give it as one. And we can redefine these quantities. We can call this and this some other quantity. Let's say that we call A to minus A over C, and this we'll call B. So B will be minus small b over c. If we do this, then we can write the general equation of a plane, such as we have z minus z zero, which you can keep the brackets or not, it doesn't really matter, equals a x minus x zero plus b y minus y zero. Once we get to this stage, what we're now going to try to do is see whether we can identify any of these terms and whether they're easy to calculate or not. And remember, what we're trying to do is to obtain an equation of a tangent plane that touches our surface at this specific point, but that we'll be able to use to get tangent planes of any surface at any point. Let's try to calculate A and, and B, and we can get rid of this now. One thing that we can have a look at is what if we fix y to be y0? How will this equation look like? If you do that, you fix y to y0, you'll see that this term will actually disappear. And you end up having z minus z0 equals a x minus x0. And if you look back at the video or the lecture notes, you will see that when we look at something that touches that point where y equals y0, then this equation is actually describing L1. That is the tangent line to the trace C1 at this specific point. And we also saw that the slope of this line was given by fx. And in this case, you can recognize, therefore, that A has to be fx. It is the same slope. And this is solely because this equation, by definition, is 
the equation for the tangent line to trace C1. And the way we define it, this is the slope of it, and therefore, because we define it this way, the slope, or A, is the partial derivative in respect to X. This is great news because we have a way to calculate A, but we still don't know how to calculate B. For that, what we can do is look at the case when we fix x to x0. In that case, we define a trace that was c2, and the tangent line to c2 was l2. And we'll see that in a similar way, this becomes z minus z0 equals b, and that is because if we fix x to x0, this term disappears, this becomes b, y minus y0, and this is exactly the equation for L2 for which the slope is Fy, and this implies that B has to be equal to Fy. Why are these great news? They are great news because we can write an equation for the tangent plane based on partial derivatives. We can therefore write it as z minus z0 equals fx x minus x0 plus fy y minus y0. And the important detail here, as you'll see in the lecture notes, is that this is a partial derivative at point x0, y0. And the same thing goes for the partial derivative in respect to y. This is for x0, y0. And this will be a first pass equation for a tangent plane that touches the surface just at that point. We can still do a little bit better than this because we can rewrite this equation. Let's get some space here. If we remember our definitions, we can actually write point z0, which we see here as f of x0, y0. And we can also take it to the other side. And this is the reason why ultimately we typically calculate an equation for a tangent plane as z equals, on the other side you have z0, and you can write this as f x0, y0, plus fx, this is the partial derivative in respect to x at point x0, y0, multiplied, it's important, it is multiplied by x minus x0, plus the partial derivative in respect to y at point x0, y0, multiplied by y minus y0. And this is the equation you want, equation for tangent plane. If you need to calculate a tangent plane to a given surface, at a specific point, this is what you're aiming for. And you can decompose this into multiple components. One is the value of the function at that point. It should be fairly straightforward, you just plug it in. You also know the point you're calculating at, and therefore you sub it in here and here. And the other ingredients are calculating the partial derivatives at those specific points. If you do that, you can write an equation for a tangent plane.